The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Between D Hop going to the Titans and the Tennessee Volunteers getting in some trouble of the past, there has been a lot of news when it comes to Tennessee football. We're going to talk about that as well as Pat Fitzgerald being fired. Yes, I know it's old news, but we're going to cover it because we haven't talked about it yet. We wanted to get our Big Ten specialist on with us. That's part of our our co-hosts as as long as well as Rory McElroy winning finally. Finally winning. So it was fun to see Rory win this past weekend, winning in the Scottish Open. A very heartfelt moment from from Rory and his team, seeing him being able to win. It's been a long time and a long time waiting and a lot of close finishes. But we're going to talk about Rory as well as Steph Curry, not on the basketball court, but on the golf course. So again, more golf news. We're going to talk about Steph Curry and his amazing performance this past weekend. All of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're very excited to bring you another episode and talk some sports. I know it's still kind of the off-season where there's not a whole lot going on, but we're going to still find stuff to talk about. And guess what? We're getting closer to football season. We're very close, I think like 16 or 17 days away or something like that from preseason NFL football. So uh, I I, I might be wrong, but... If my math is correct, I think that's how close we are to NFL preseason football, which is very exciting. We're very excited for football season to come up, but we can still talk about football as it's approaching. But before we do, let's mention our sponsors, and we are sponsored by Mahler Bros Golf. Mahler Bros Golf is an amazing business, and I can tell you that with confidence because I am an owner of Mahler Bros Golf. I just got in a package of some of our newer drops today, including the one that I'm wearing today. I know you probably can't see it too close uh, from the camera that's clear across the room for me right now, but I was very happy with how this turned on, so happy that I thought, you know what, screw it, I'm not even gonna wear this t-shirt anymore. I'm gonna strip it off right here in the studio, put on this Mahler Bros Golf polo. Amazingly uh, comfortable and I I love the stretchy material. It's very breathable. Uh, It's very exciting stuff over at Mahler Bros Golf. A lot of um, uh, very exciting news coming very soon with Mahler Bros Golf, all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned by going over to MahlerBros.com. That's M-A-H-L-E-R-B-R-O-S.com. And you can always use code RISING2 for 10% off. We've got polos, hats, and I think more hats to come. Uh, So we'll have to stay tuned for that. We've also got mugs, and those mugs go along great with Mahler Bros Golf Coffee. Yes, we have golf brand coffee. Uh, It is a branded coffee specifically for golfers. We've got the Birdie Blend, the Bogey Blend, the Ace Blend, and those are all ground coffee. We also have single cups. We've got the Approach Shot, Flop Shot, Chip Shot. Uh, All of those are your little single shot uh, K cups. So go check it out. Mahler Bros Golf. A lot of amazing things there right now, currently, and a lot of fun stuff coming to you very soon. So you're going to have to go check it out. MahlerBros.com. That's M A H L E R B R O S.com. And you can use code RISING2 for 10% off just for listening to this podcast. So go check us out. MahlerBros.com. Again, use code RISING2 for 10% off. If you want to look for coffee, just type in MahlerBros.com slash coffee. It's an amazing way to go check out the best way to get your day in full swing. Tee off your day with a fresh cup of Malabro's coffee. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring in the other uh, the other founder of Malabro's Golf as well. We've got Britton in studio, also our Big Ten specialist. Britton, how you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. I've got my camera way up here now. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm doing well. Yeah, it's good um, to see you. Uh, and I know it's, yeah, it's, yeah, we're not able to get you on a whole lot. I know our, our schedules are just kind of different and stuff like that, but we get you on whenever we can. And hopefully one day we'll be able to get enough people to support Muller Rose golf where, uh, you know, we can get you on full time. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be, uh, looking forward to that. Yeah. With the uh, new schedule and new work schedule, I traded in my blue collar job for a, uh, slacks and uh, dress shoes kind of job. So different hours now. And, uh, you know, try to make it work as often as I can. Yeah, it's exciting. But Jeremy, we got you in studio. How you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing pretty good. Then for a Monday, it's all right. But what made really better was getting this polo in today. I walked in and saw him on the couch. I'm like, little kid on Christmas. I'm like, 
no effing way. <laughs> but I'm doing pretty good. Then glad to talk sports with both of you guys. Then it's great that you see you back, Brett. I know obviously it's kind of been a minute, but it's always great to have you back, buddy. Then I'm just ready to talk some sports with everybody. Absolutely. And today we don't have Blake with us, but a huge shout out. Congratulations to Blake and his his uh, wife Kelsey as well. They both uh, bore their their they. they have their new son uh so huge congrats to them blake we love you man we, we're very happy for you exciting news i know you got to take care of him so you take as much time as it need as you need to take care of him that's very exciting news uh so very excited to have have uh, a new member of rising to the occasion but uh guys let's get into it we've got a lot to talk about we're going to start off with d hop going to the titans some pretty recent news with d hop we talked about D-Hop in the past and talking about some possibilities of where he might be able to go, and we thought, man, there's a lot of really fun, exciting places to go, but I don't think we really mentioned too much about the Titans as being one of the top spots. Um, Britton, I can't remember if you were on with us when we were able to talk about him going into free agency and stuff, but uh, I mean, how do you feel? I guess first, something new that we're trying out too if you're watching right now if you're uh if you're listening go over to youtube uh if you're watching on youtube just drop down in the comments and answer the question of the day is d hop a good fit for the titans or is the titans a good fit for d hop however you want to take that do you like that move uh Britton, we'll start off with you do you like the move for d hop going to the titans yeah i really do i think the titans have a uh well-established organization and i think that they're starting to you know, be able to put some pieces together by getting a guy like D Hop. You've got, you know, some solid running back uh, play, and you got got some manageable quarterback. Um, I think the offense is going to look a lot different with with him. Um, and I've said it for you know probably a couple of years now. I thought they could really use, you know, a big time receiver. Uh, D Hop is going to be a great fit there. I think he's going to flourish um, under that offense, and I'm excited to see, um, you know, kind of what he brings to the table and how well he meshes with the team. All right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, yeah, you do bring up a good, a good point too, because adding in, you know, with, with D hop, you know, you need that key wide receiver out there and uh, you've got De- Derek Henry, a great running back, like you said too. I guess my concern is more or less just the, the quarterback position. Where are you going to go with the, the quarterback position? Yeah. And I don't, I don't know what they'll end up doing there. Did they draft a quarterback here? I know they have uh, 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 what's his name Malik Malik Willis uh, is that is that right from uh, I think he came from FAU if I remember or Liberty that's what it was from Liberty so yeah, yeah they they do have Malik uh, Malik Willis I think he's he was a rookie last year I'm not sure how much faith they have in him but still have Tana Hill too so yeah we'll, we'll definitely see but Jeremy yeah, how are you liking oh yeah Britt Tana Hill's fine too yeah yeah I think I think he's a, a solid quarterback but Jeremy how are you feeling about about the D hop over to the Titans. I think it's a really good pickup for Tennessee. Like, as you mentioned, Britain, Tennessee needed something. Like, they needed a spark, and getting a big pickup like DeAndre Hopkins is really, really going to be huge for Tennessee, and that's really going to make a lot of uh, a lot of secondary defense really think about um, specific plays that they know is maybe going to go this way, but you also have DeAndre Hopkins now. Like, you're really going to be honestly – questioning a lot of things about DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, obviously, what more can you really say about DeAndre Hopkins, his ability? Everyone always knows knows him as no drop hop. I mean, overall, it's going to be a really, really fun pickup for Tennessee, like I mentioned, and overall, DeAndre Hopkins will adjust really quick, and it's going to be a really fun season for Tennessee, in my honest opinion. Yeah, yeah, I think so, and I do like, uh, I, I do agree with you. I think I like the idea of uh it's a good pickup for Tennessee to get mm-hmm. D hop. Yeah. Uh, and, and overall that is really exciting for, for Tennessee, for Tennessee fans. I think you have to like D hop. I think you have to like him coming in. Uh, and personally, yeah, I, I think that for Tennessee, it's good. I guess where I'm thinking is looking at the previous wide receivers, thinking about what kind of wide receivers, uh, that, that have come through Tennessee. I mean, if you look in the past, Julio Jones, what ended up, ended up happening to him after he goes to the to the Titans? Not too much. What what happens to, to A.J. Brown in his career there? He needs to go over to Philly to really uh, fulfill something, uh, you know, more than what he was getting there at, at, at Tennessee. But, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking of some wide receivers that have been there. So hopefully this works out for D-Hop. I really want to see D-Hop succeed, um, you know, and, and just kind of looking forward. Uh, I guess we're, we we talked a little bit about the fantasy football here just 
uh, what was it, this past week. Yeah, uh, on so, Saturday. Uh, you know, and talking about fantasy football, we didn't mention D Hop as being one of the fantasy football wide true. receivers, those top five wide receivers. Britton, if you have the chance, are you going to go with a D Hop if you have a chance in a, in a fantasy football league to, to pick up D Hop? Uh, or is that maybe a guy that maybe swings pretty low on your list? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I probably will pick him up if, if given the opportunity. I do think he flourishes here. Um, my gut tells me Tannehill is a starting quarterback there still. Yeah. Um, he's had his struggles, sure. But I I think, you know, by adding adding a piece like D-Hop, that's really going to help um, that offense just in general. And, and it's weird because when you tell me that D-Hop is now at the Titans, it, it kind of is like – it's kind of weird because I feel like he's been at the been at the Titans for five years now. <laughs> he hasn't even played snap there, but yeah. it just seems to really fit well. And I picture him in, in the Titans jersey, and it's just like I don't know. Something just feels natural about that. That just feels good to me. Um, and I don't know. Time will tell. But um, I am excited about the move, and I, I think it was was a really good uh, decision on, on the Titans. Uh, staff there to, to pick up a player like him, um, a player of his caliber. Everybody knows who he is. You know he's he's made a name for himself in the NFL. This is this is a proven veteran guy. Um, and not only are you bringing in just a, a a good wide receiver, you're bringing in that the the leadership that he's going to bring in. Yeah, definitely on on, a, on offense. You know that that could really seem seems to really need you know that little extra push. Because, like you said, they've got guys like Derrick Henry, you know, potentially one of the better backs in in the NFL, and you've got a pretty solid O line, and uh, it just seems like they're just something missing, and and I think he may be that ingredient. You know, you, you made made your sauce, and it tastes pretty good, but it's just not nothing special. And you add that little salt in there, and all of a sudden, it just it's a game changer, and and maybe. Maybe D hops the salt that that offense needs. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. And and, and you're, I I think we were just talking about this with predictions. How how hard and how silly it is to predict because how can you predict something that you've never seen? You know, when, when you think of like predicting, uh, you know, pr- predicting a team that even from last year, I mean, they they may have two new pieces on their on their entire roster, but it's still a new team. It's a new season. They're coming into a completely new season where they're going to change everything up because, uh, and you think of the, of the Titans adding one piece to that offense could have been, like you said, just enough. It could have been just enough seasoning to really give that, that extra spark, you know, and, and to think D hop, I think he is a game changer. I don't think, uh, you know, just because I I think he's starting to get to that football age where I don't think he can be your number one option, though. I think he's got to be that number two option that you keep out there because you know you can toss it up to him and you know he's going to catch the ball. Mm -hmm. So who can the Titans use to be that number one option? I think somebody's going to have to step up into that role and and really take over. But I do like D-Hop. I like him going to the Titans. I wish... He would have gone to the Houston Texans. Uh, the Texans were were my was my number one pick for him. I really wanted him to go there. I think a lot of people wanted him to go over to the the Patriots. I just don't see that because he he left the 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 Texans because because of Bill O'Brien. Yeah. And so with Bill O'Brien over there at the Patriots now, I don't really like that move. I get it. Uh, people want to see him in a Bill in a Bill Belichick system and help out those young quarterbacks that are still battling right now and uh, Billy Zappi and and. Uh, we uh, Mac Jones, so I, I think that could have been a good schematic fit. It's just I don't I don't like him going back to Bill O'Brien when that was the the reason why he left the Texans. Um, but for him to go back to the Texans, I think that would have been really exciting. I, I was really hoping for that because you've got him going back to the, the to the the home team, you know, the, the team that he came from, and going there to a crowd that loves him, a crowd that would love to have him back, yeah. and. He could go there with a with a new quarterback who's got a lot of promise in C.J. Stroud, and another quarter or, or another wide receiver who's been added there, and a, a really good pickup in, in Quentin Johnston to be able to have him out there. So I, I really would have liked to see him in, in Houston. I think that's it's hard for me to say I really like him moving to the Tennessee Titans when the Texans is really where I wanted him to go. If I had a pick uh, for where I'd like to see him. It was right alongside Baker Mayfield. Okay. Okay. Going down to Tampa. I would love to see that. Yeah, I would love to see that combination. I think that'd be fun. 
I, and again, I think Tampa Bay could use another wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think that would have been a lot of fun to watch. But nonetheless, I'm I'm happy with the Titans. Um, I think that's a good decision. Um, I think it benefits both parties because he's, he's going to be that fresh face, that extra seasoning that that uh, fan base is yearning for and has yearned for for the last several, several years now. So I think it's going to be a good fit for both the fan base, the organization, uh, and also D Hop himself. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm excited to see what it what it brings forward. I think we're going to see a lot of new, just overall newness in the NFL this year. It's going to look really new, like you mentioned, Baker Mayfield going down to take over for the greatest to have ever done it down in Tampa. And then you you think of some of the other moves, like I think even smaller moves like uh, Darren Waller going up to to New York to help the Giants in a tight end position that they really could could use right now. I think that's that's yeah, really that's, that's going to be really big. Uh, and then even thinking of Derek Carr over the Saints, that's that's a lot of fun to think of. And then you think of the rookies, the one I just mentioned, uh, and C.J. Stroud with Quentin Johnston down there in uh, Houston. And then you you jump over to Bryce Young over with with the Panthers. You've got uh, just a lot of new faces in a lot of new places, and it, it's it's going to be really exciting. I think looking looking forward to this new year. Uh, I mean, your, your Detroit Lions are going to look a little different. They've they've added some pieces and stuff to to really kind of go Lions together. Are win the division this year. Yeah, I, I I like that pick. I wouldn't be surprised. Really, and honestly, I'm really not biased when I say that. I seriously think they do. Well, I mean, they don't have they don't really have to go through the Packers now. Yeah. So. Go for it. You they, know? Never, they haven't had to go through the Packers the past couple of years. They beat them. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if you look at the end of the season last year, I mean, realistically, if you, if they were towards the middle of the year, if, if they were there at the beginning of the year, they they would have probably won the division and then had a chance at the Super Bowl. I mean, they were playing phenomenal towards mm-hmm. the end of the year. And think about how young of a team and young the coaches and all this. It just took some time for them to start gelling when they did look out they're dangerous and they've gone through an off season and uh you know they did pretty good in the draft they have had the off season here to you know to gel and mesh together even more so i'm i'm genuinely uh this is probably the first time in my life i've been excited for the lions season yeah yeah i mean it just kind of taking a look at it too i had to remember exactly who all was uh in in their division too um, up in the NFC North, it looks like uh, they got the Bears, Packers, and the Vikings. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that's very that's, that's very reasonable to think of because the Packers they're they're going to be on a down year this yeah. year. Uh, I don't think Jordan Love is the guy. I just don't have no. any faith in him. As much as he wants the the Bears to call him daddy, that's not going to happen. Uh, and whenever you look over at the Vikings, I think there's been some pieces that I don't like that have left and. You know, with, with losing Dalvin Cook, with losing Adam Thielen, I think those are two really big offensive pieces that kind of hurt their offense. Yes, you still have Justin Jefferson, who, uh, which also, let's bring that up, Justin Jefferson, ni- a 99 club in, in Madden now. No uh, way. Really, really yeah. exciting for him. I think, uh, I don't know for sure. I haven't seen anything. He's got to be the youngest player to have ever reached 99 in Madden. Uh, I, I can't think of any. That, that would be, be able to reach it that fast. But uh, very exciting. But, I mean, overall, I just don't know if the Vikings are going to be as good this year. Uh, I know that they did add TJ Hawkinson a little late in the year. I think that's a good pickup for them. So maybe that's going to click a little more. Maybe they have somebody else step up and maybe a role kind of like what Thielen had, and you still have Justin Jefferson who is going to rip rip the ball away from somebody with one hand on the ball. So I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I just don't see the Vikings being able to win the division and do as good as they did last year. Uh, and then you've got the Bears, which I think the Bears are going to come out swinging this year. I think the the Bears have a very good chance of, of being up there in the talks too. So I feel like the Lions and the Bears are really going to start to take over oh that my. division. What's that? I said, oh, my. <laughs> and Lions and Bears, yeah, we're just missing the the Tigers, the Lions, Lions, Vikings, Packers, and Bears. Oh my! So yeah, that's it's a very fun division to look at. And honestly, Detroit all the way. I, I would say, I would say, I'd be comfortable putting my bet in right now for a future on the Lions yeah. to win that division. I, I like it a lot. Yep, yeah, for sure. You know, with with the the pieces that they have there, and then just looking at the overall fact that uh, 
they don't have as much of a, a, a battle to get through it. Uh, yeah, they, they definitely have a very good chance there. And, and like I said, I like the future there. But to stick it in Tennessee and to, to stay in Tennessee, looking over at not pro sports, but over college sports, some news that's broken out here recently in the past couple of days, the Tennessee Volunteers getting themselves in a little bit of trouble from the past. Now, this is very frustrating to look at just because this is from kind of the 2019, 2020 area. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and read this here. This is an article. Uh, it says, let's see here. I'm just going to skip down. It says that the uh, more, you know, some more reported uh, details coming out about the Tennessee 200 plus infractions committed by the football team from 2018 to 2020. So a lot of infractions, 200 infractions that they've had and from my understanding it seems to have been recruiting uh and some of the some of the recruiting that they were doing in that during that time uh, the school did avoid a bowl ban which is really big because tennessee is just now starting to come back josh heupel has really helped but uh and, and we'll talk a little bit about about how they're coming back and everything and how i think that they've they've done really well even with all of this coming out but they did a, a, avoid a bowl ban um, but they do have to vacate all of their wins from the 2019 to 2020 seasons. So that kind of sucks on the on the record book, but overall, like as far as fans know, as, as, as like how how the fans feel, those 16 wins, they they were there. They celebrated every every one of those games. Mm -hmm. So you really can't take that feeling away, that feeling of excitement and happiness. So that doesn't really matter too much. But uh, I guess 11 games. Sorry. Uh, so 11 games in that span, going eight and five, 2019, and then three and seven. Um, and then also a Gator Bowl victory, which will be taken away from. So, yeah, it kind of sucks. But ultimately, this is all because of Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, and I believe there's some some bans on Jeremy Pruitt as well. So if he gets hired by another another uh, team at all, he's got to sit that first year out, I believe. Uh, I, I believe I read that somewhere. So there's kind of something going against him, which is good that they're punishing him as well mm -hmm. and not just Tennessee for something he did. But it seems like it was some recruiting violations, like I said, over 200, which is absolutely nuts. And they're going to have to be pay, uh, fined $8 million, which is going to total out to be closer to $9 million after all the extra fees and stuff like that, which ultimately isn't so bad because you fired Jeremy Pruitt with cause. So you got rid of him and his contract and don't have to pay him out anything. And now you're just paying $9 million now. So to look at Tennessee... I think this is a very good thing for Tennessee that they were able to get ahead of this and fire him and save money uh, by doing that because I think they would have had more fines plus having to pay him uh, if they would have still had him on the staff after kind of learning about this stuff. So getting ahead of it was very big. Now, the one that we were just talking about here just before the show, the one that I think really hurts and the thing that really sucks for Josh Heupel and the Tennessee Volunteers is that their football scholarships are going to be reduced by 28 during this five-year probation. So they're going to have a five-year probation, which is weird that we're calling it a probation because we're not we're not removing them from any postseason activities. But Jeremy, twenty-eight games and twenty-eight scholarships in a five-year period—that's a lot of scholarships when you're talking about a team that is just now starting to get up there, and you can't afford to start to give away some of these scholarships. No, you can't. That's that's not like a little slap on the wrist type of deal. That's a really, really big, huge deal. Like it's one thing just to have one, like I just mentioned, but to go ahead and have five and 28 all in the span in general, that's going to be really, really big for Tennessee. And like you look at a lot of these other colleges and I know Britain will know a little more off the top of my head more than I do. Like you get some of these recruiting classes, like you can get really, really big numbers in all these classes. Like I know, um, Britt and I, he'll probably mention Nebraska if I had to guess. Like, I don't know exactly what their numbers are, but, like, I guarantee you it's probably big. Like, now looking at this type of a situation, this is really going to – this is going to hurt. Like, who knows what this is going to bring to the table, of course, but, like, in the long run, having all of this come down is honestly going to come back and bite you, in my honest opinion. Yeah, yeah, and just the, the, the overall fact that, you know, this is 28 total scholarships – and I don't know exactly how this is being broken up. I don't know how this is going to look overall. But if you were to, to divide that up, that's over five scholarships uh, per year. And this is a, a building program. So, Britain, I mean, we've got a, a building program there at Tennessee. Tennessee's been looking really good for the past couple of seasons. It looks like this past season was finally the, the year that felt like Tennessee is back. 
They're in contention for a lot of things right now. We have a lot of hope for Tennessee coming going forward with Heupel and what he's been able to do there. But now you have this, you know, 28 and 28 scholarships within the next five years. I, I mean, that that definitely hurts whenever you're talking about maybe maybe uh, those, those extra and, and think of today, too. The scholarships aren't just for your recruiting classes. They're also for some of these transfers you're trying to get in. So that 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 definitely hurts the Tennessee volunteers going forward. Yeah, so I mean, to put that into perspective, I think if you were to break down the average recruiting class from any school, you're going to be looking probably, if I, and this is a guess, but I would say probably between 18 to 25 per year, 25 being on the higher end. So when you're talking about 28 in total, that's that's probably more than a normal entire recruiting class for a year. I mean, that's pretty pretty substantial when you break down the numbers and and uh you know talk about it in that sense but i mean as far as the allegations well it's it's not even allegations anymore it's it's facts um but as far as that's that's concerned i mean to an extent you know i better get this out of the way is whoopie do i mean this this happens all the time right um tennessee just happened to be the next one to got caught this is uh you, you, if you talk to talk to athletes um, from years past, they will tell you. Johnny Manziel uh, went on the, I think, was with busting with the boys, and said, you know, he he made a ton ton of money, which obviously everybody knew about. Um, NIL before NIL, I was official. The good guys were getting paid money under the table, so there's uh, this has been going on for years. This has gone on, you know, even, uh, you know, back in the 80s, 90s. This is nothing new. It's unfortunate. It shouldn't happen. It, it does um, kind of take some of the integrity away. So I don't condone it by any means. But I, I feel like this is just, uh, well, Tennessee's the next one to get caught. Somebody else will, you know, get caught in a year or two for something they did in the past. Every every team, if I were to, if I were to venture – yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Nebraska fan. I, I will guarantee Tommy Frazier made some, some side deals. <laughs> you know, Scott Frost got some side deals as a player. Yeah. You know, it just it just happens. So Yeah, and it's uh, not to make light of this of, of any of it by any means, but um I just I just think for the next several years, uh every so often you hear about another school and it is what it is. Yeah, and it's it's crazy to think how we can go backwards and and kind of kind of give these punishments for things that happened in the past, which now today would be okay. Uh, and and I don't know how, I, you know, like you said, I don't want to make light of it, but it just seems silly because now you're allowing it. So why is it so bad that they did it back then? I guess just because uh, you know it, it helped them at a time whenever they weren't allowed to do it, when other people weren't allowed to. But like I said, that's they're they're taking away eleven wins. So did it really help Tennessee that much, even though that they were doing something they shouldn't have done? So it's almost like putting in a cheat code and then the cheat code didn't even work. <laughs> hey, like I always say, if you ain't cheating, you ain't winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you if you ain't winning, you probably ain't cheating. So uh, and you, you got to look at it and look at it in, through the right perspective. But I guess it, it looks like about 110 impermissible hotel room nights. 180 impermissible meals, 72 instance of, instances of uh, providing impermissible entertainment or other benefits, 41 impermissible recruiting contacts, 37 instances of providing impermissible game day par- uh, parking, and 14 times in which gear was impermissibly provided to prospects. So a lot of different things. And like I said, over this is over 200 uh, different infractions that they've they've had, so it really sucks, and I think it sucks more so just because it's it's hurting Josh Heupel and the Tennessee Volunteers of today. Even though it was the Tennessee Volunteers, it was really Jeremy Pruitt and the Tennessee Volunteers of yesterday that did this stuff. And I I think overall, I feel like they definitely got away with not not very much when it comes to the losses or I guess the the wins that aren't going to be on their record anymore, and. Uh, whenever you think of the fines, I think $9 million isn't too much when you're talking about the Tennessee Volunteers. So ultimately not too bad of a deal there for the for the Volunteers, but it does hurt. I think the rec- the recruiting 
is, is what hurts the most, not being able to offer those 28 scholarships. So I don't know exactly how you do that, how you split that up, but uh, I really hope that this doesn't hurt the volunteers too much because I think they did do the right thing in getting rid of, rid of Jeremy Pruitt and kind of moving on from there. It's a good thing they only caught the 200 violations instead of the other 5,000 they missed. <laughs> yeah. Still 200. That's nuts. Yeah, let's let's oh, hope that they don't happens. let's hope they don't find the receipts for all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But guys, let's let's move on, but before we do move on, first of all, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button and hit that hit that subscribe button. We also want you to comment down below. That's going to help us a lot in reaching a lot of our goals because we've been growing rapidly, guys. We're over 2800 subscribers now. That number just seems ridiculous when you think Britain we started this podcast in your basement about a year ago uh and so that's that's really crazy to think yeah. uh you know and so 28 2800 we're over we're, we're over 2500 now uh which is crazy and we've had some some episodes that have hit some really cool numbers to see uh you know hitting over 2000 on some of them there's one that i just looked at the other day and we hit over 7000 on one video uh so guys help wow. us out by hitting that like button comment down below because that's what helps us beat the algorithms um, but also before we move on we also want to bring up another sponsor of ours and that is bro throw bro throw is the best way to bet on games bro throw is not a sports book it is a sports betting community. We use BroThrow. I use it very often. I just won, I think, 150 bucks the other night by going on there and just betting against some suckers, some guys that thought that the White Sox were going to be able to beat the Braves, and I, th I said otherwise. So I bet some money on that game uh, you know, and was able to win some big money. And, guys, I'm telling you right now, BroThrow is so much fun because, like I said, again, it's not a sports book. It's a sports betting community. So what you do is you sign up with BroThrow, and the only way to sign up is by invitation. So go to BroThrow. Throw, uh, I believe it's bet.brothrow.com slash rising2. That's B-R-O-T-H-R-O-W dot com slash rising2, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O. That's what that's going to do. That's going to give you an invitation to join Bro Throw, but then it's also going to add you into our group, which we have a lot of fun stuff coming for college football season and all that kind of stuff. So you want to join our group because we're going to have a lot of fun stuff going on. They also have some some really cool contests and stuff that you can go in there and and win. You can enter into these contests. I think there was one time where I won 500 bucks off of contest. All I did was go through there and select certain golfers against other matchups and stuff like that, and just went through there and had a had a good old time and i think i might have put 10 bucks in or something like that into contests just kind of depends sometimes they have free contests that you just enter in and you can win money just by by choosing the right picks so guys i'm telling you right now bro throw is the way to go when it comes to sports betting go check it out again bro throw.com that's b-r-o-t-h-r-o-w.com slash rising to slash r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o that's going to invite you to bro throw and be able to use their platform but it's also going to add you to our group which you want to be a part of when it comes to college football season here very soon. But guys, let's talk about Pat Fitzgerald, some more college football news, some older news, but we want to touch on it because, again, we, we're kind of waiting to touch on this uh, until Britton could be with us because he's going to have to go against the uh, the – uh, Northwestern Wildcats. I was drawing a blank. They're so insignificant to me that uh, it doesn't matter so much. But it's significant when it comes to uh, to Nebraska football having to go against the the you know that Northwestern team that can upset you quite often. Uh, and they're just a they're just a tough team. A as small of a team as they are, they make it to the Big Ten championship sometimes. Uh, they 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 upset teams that they shouldn't ever be upsetting. Uh, and they're just that kind of a team. And I think Pat, Pat Fitzgerald was a coach that was able to put together maybe not great talent, but he was able to use the talent that he had. And I think he was really good at developing players and getting them to that point and being able to stand tall when they were going against those big opponents. So, Britton, kind of tell us a little bit. I mean, I know with Pat Fitzgerald, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on kind of involving hazing and stuff like that. And some of the stuff was really disturbing. But some of the stuff that was that was kind of being brought up was just like, you know, we talked about this. We've been in locker rooms. We know that this stuff is going on in locker rooms. So some of it is kind of yeah. silly, but some stuff was very disturbing. And it was kind of, it was definitely crossing a line. So the fact that Pat Fitzgerald must have known about this and didn't do anything about it. Uh, so they end up kicking him out the door and uh, along with along with other guys. But I mean, how big of an impact is this on Northwestern going forward? Yeah, listen, I mean, when you think of the Northwestern Wildcats, you think of 
Pat Fitzgerald. He he is the face of of that organization. I almost I'm gonna go ahead and just say it. I almost smell a conspiracy here. I really <laughs> do. Because listen, listen, boys. Pat Fitzgerald has been horrendous the last three seasons. They won one game last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, year before, they had a horrible, horrible season in which I believe they may have won two or three. And uh, Wait, what was their one said, win last well, season, though? I don't remember even who, wh- what team they would have beat last season. Uh, it was some Irish team. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. It, it wasn't but even on American it, soil. So does it really no, count? It doesn't count. Doesn't okay, okay. Count. okay. We, we'll just pretend like it doesn't count. <laughs> We'll really blast that one. Anyway, so so hear me out. Everybody said after uh, two years ago when they won two or three games, oh well, Pat Fitzgerald's been in the funk where he'll do that and they'll win the big, they'll go to the Big Ten championship next year. Well, it didn't happen. They won one game off American soil. So, unfortunately, what happens in an organization like this is when you get a guy like Pat Fitzgerald that's well loved around the community. And, and around the football fan base, the boosters, the alumni, everybody loves Pat. Well, when you're not producing, eventually somebody says, we got to make a change. But you know who's not going to go along with that is the boosters with all the money. The fan base, they're not going to go along with it. So what happens is they say, hey, somebody's showing Squiddy in the locker room. Let's get this guy out of here. You know what I mean? That's a total inside I mean, joke for those who don't know what he's talking about, and we don't need to describe it. I'm so, I'll get you off YouTube. But uh, no, I mean, I, I don't condone it. Sucks. Shouldn't have happened. That just surprised me that Pat would let that go on, um, because he's he's you know the old military guy. He's the old buzz cut, straight laced mother trucker. I mean, he's just a, <laughs> he's just a. He's just a beefcake, you know what I mean? He's just a beefcake. <laughs> I, just, I can't, I can't I just, imagine he'd let that go. I, I'm going with conspiracy here. I just, I just want to give a shout out to Britain too, because you know, it, you don't know how hard it is for him to kind of hold back and make sure we, we keep our monetization on YouTube. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's shocking to see him leave. Uh, and when it first came out, I thought. There must have been something really messed up going on in the locker rooms if they're gonna talk about this hazing because like let's be honest every every football team every every sports team has hazing of the rookies of the new guys and stuff like you just that's just part of the fun mm-hmm. and so at first i thought maybe it was just some guys kind of you know just just kind of crying being little wimps uh and and you know we, we would probably even tease them and uh, right to their face too but you know and and, and it's just kind of silly that you know they they were so disturbed by some of this stuff that you know like they went on and complaining about it later on which ended up being becoming big news and getting getting guys fired so uh, i don't know i just i looked at it and i I, at first when this story came out i was really shocked to see uh, and i thought you know surely pat fitzgerald just didn't know anything about it maybe he just didn't know that it was going on but stuff like the naked naked uh, bear crawl and uh, turning the lights off uh, and 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 beating them you know while everybody's naked and stuff just really disturbing stuff and uh hey. just <laughs> i mean there there's well, let's be honest with everybody out there there is definitely some some not so straight things that go on in locker rooms and just about every male locker room is this way um but we just don't talk about it and we move on so yeah maybe maybe you're right maybe there is some conspiracy but there's there's uh, let me also say this there are there's those things that go on and we don't talk about it but then there's also a line that you have to draw and some of that stuff that i saw that they were doing definitely crosses that line so you know everything that i read that happened in there i already know exactly what it looked like because i've been (laughs) in that atmosphere i witnessed Uh, every bit of this I mean, and yeah. Coach B is just a good guy, and <laughs> turned the eye and never heard about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've we've definitely had some crazy things oh, happen, man. and I mean, what's what's funny to me too is that now, now with some of these things coming out, <laughs> people people just know what's happening in men's locker rooms now, <laughs> and so thanks a lot, Northwestern. Fun, right? 
yeah, thanks a lot, Northwestern. Now we're going to have to come up with new stuff to do in the locker rooms. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> we're going to have to act straight. But Jeremy, tell us about your experiences in the locker rooms. Do you think? Do you oh. think Northwestern took it a little too far? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. I, okay. Um. Northwestern took it too far. About ten <laughs> miles too far. Um. It's one thing, like you mentioned, to do. Like, what happens in a men's locker room stays in a men's locker room. But with everything that obviously has happened, there's not much you can really say, but what the heck is going on here? Like, uh, it obviously I know with Fitzgerald getting fired for the hazing and everything, it is it is what it is. There's no real way around it. It's just point blank. You really can't say anything otherwise. But, like... All I'm going to say is, is what happens in the locker room obviously <laughs> didn't stay in the locker room. It didn't, it, and that's why Pat Fitzgerald was Yeah, I mean, me. obviously, but. a lot of people will give the, the hey, 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 goodbye song to Pat Fitzgerald. <laughs> and I mean, overall, this is just, I could say so many words, but for the monetization, this is so messed up. <laughs> like, that's all I can honestly say about all of this in my I'm just going to say one more thing about this, and I'm going to oh, drop no. it, because... Oh no! Hear, you know, hear me now. Whoever it is that, that squealed on him, I say we strip him naked and beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> We're gonna find you, <laughs> and what we'll this, whip you with wet towels. <laughs> what this all of a sudden just become the really, really weird version of Taken? I I can't I can't even tell you how yeah. many times Britton and I would come home from the locker room with red whelps all over us too oh, from man. wet towels in the locker room. You'll and... say it's, did you say everyone it's from the gym, but it's really not from the gym. <laughs> and then you tell everybody it was a wet towel and not what it really was. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna have to move on from this yeah. subject because I'm I'm losing it. <laughs> I don't think I've had this good of a time on on this podcast, oh, but it, it does suck for Northwestern to to lose Pat Fitzgerald when they're they're in the works for a lot of big things, uh, and he is that coach that keeps them relevant in the Big Ten sometimes, uh, and you know, and it, it it is just such an awkward thing there uh, to see Pat Fitzgerald. You're gonna have to take Britton off the screen yeah, if he's gonna going to. keep on losing it. I'm going to <laughs> let him catch his breath for a second. Oh man! <laughs> but no, it, it's it. it it, it really does suck to see him go um, just because, like I said, I think he was the reason why Northwestern was still relevant in the Big Ten. Um, but let's go on to golf. Uh, as, as, as excited as we are for college football to come up and talk some college football, uh, it, it's going to be interesting. But let's talk about golf because moving away from Pat's Fitz, Pat Fitzgerald and the, the gross things that he did in the locker room, we can look at the gross things that Rory McIlroy was able to do on the golf course, oh, but he was just sick out there, just slinging the driver around. Um, now he, he really did. Uh, and <laughs> that maybe there's some other things slinging around. In the <laughs> <Northwestern. laughs> All right. Did you, guys hear, did you guys hear what, what happened at Northwestern? <laughs> Oh, oh my! We usually keep it pretty calm on this show too, but <laughs> see what happens when you bring a Fitzgerald. Holy cow! But <laughs> I'm crying, guys, and it's oh not my. even a sad time. But we're having oh. fun. Oh, man. But anyways, Rory played an outstanding, uh, outstanding four rounds of golf. Uh, he really did, and, and uh, you know, and these these are tears of joy uh, that that come to my eyes just knowing that Rory McIlroy. All three of us uh, are crying. I think he's been in the top fifteen for i don't know how long now it's been so so many so many close opportunities that he's had where it just seems like that last round he can't keep it together or maybe in the last round he starts to put something together but can't finish the putts whatever the case may be but that wasn't the case for rory mcelroy this time and even though it seemed like it was just about out uh and it wasn't going to happen uh it's Came together two birdies on that that last two holes to finally win, uh, and now Britain's gonna get us in trouble with monetization there, <laughs> popping that in. Um, but <laughs> oh man! But anyways, Rory finally finishing it off in the last two holes, really piecing it together, get a birdie on both, being able to jump out in the lead uh, to win it by one stroke of all things too. So 
only only finishing with minus two on that last round there on Sunday, wow. but being able to to win the the entire Scottish Open, uh, I wasn't wa- able to watch a whole lot of it, Britain. But uh, I, I I know you said you watched a little bit of it, trying to catch up and see what happened. But really exciting stuff to finally see this happen for for Rory. Yeah, and it, and it couldn't have come at a better time. Um, you know, he's been very vocal about the Live Tour, and that's seems to be all you know anybody thinks of when they when they hear rory now um just because of how vocal he's been about that so for him to put all that to the side and come out and have a great week of golf and like you said to finally finish one uh it's pretty cool um not a big rory fan but it was uh was was kind of cool to see because it was was well deserved and it just feels like he's been you know kind of uh like kind of like a Ricky Fowler situation there where yeah. Ricky finally just got his and uh, Rory finally got one. So congratulations to him. And, you know, not, might not have played the best round is uh, his last day, but it was enough to get the win. Yeah, enough to get the W. And that's really all that matters, bringing home that, that very large purse. Uh, and that's that's really what matters ultimately. And, and like I said, seeing him get so close. Uh, and, and I like that you bring that up. I think, you know, the, the thing that, that – makes it so much uh, more enjoyable to see this. We, we talked about the Live uh, and PGA merger, how this was really kind of burning the guys like Rory. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we, we think of other guys that stayed with the PGA uh, and, and seeing and Ricky Fowler being one of them. Uh, so both of those guys and seeing the, the amounts of money that they were passing up to back, you know, back up the PGA and stay with the PGA, it, it's it definitely is a, a really great time for this to be happening for these guys that really deserve it. The guys that they they worked their butts off to get to this point. Uh, Ricky was probably a bigger story just because of seeing where he was about to be done with golf uh, and, and not by any means of his own, but just the fact that he couldn't get it together. He was, he was performing so bad that they were about to just remove him and, and remove his PGA card, and he, he would have to earn that back. Uh, and then now with Rory, Rory's been... It's a very similar situation because he's been so close and he keeps on getting to that that point where he just needs to finish a couple of putts. He just needs to to finish a couple of holes. He just needs to finish this last round and whatever the case may be. And even though he he couldn't quite pull it off to to, to have a huge win on Sunday, still being able to, to win it. And uh, you, you got to feel really happy for Rory being able to finish it off. Absolutely. I mean, you look at the the tournaments that he's been put into and like you always you're always going to hear Roy McIlroy's name but like you're used to hearing Roy McIlroy on the top of the podium and he's honestly been on a slump and he's just hasn't had his shots go his way his chips go his way his putting go his way just all around his just, uh, yeah his putting has just been ungodly I mean there's no other way of saying it but you could tell just by his facial expressions, he did not like the way he was playing at all. Yeah, like he was really, really unhappy with just a simple, simple drive off the tee box, or just like a simple, simple seven or eight iron shot. Then he wanted to go this way, but all of a sudden it slices just a hair off, and then it's in the really, really rough stuff, or even in a bunker, or whatever the situation is. But like you look at him now, and finally being able to to break through and finally get his name back on top to where he's he's saying that this is going to be my time. This isn't going to be the last time they're going to hear that hear me, but it's definitely going to be upcoming and I think he has more to come now that he finally got to break through and I expect more from him honestly. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing too is I feel like a lot of times we criticize these guys and we we, we you know I've, I've heard a lot of criticism about Ricky Fowler not being able to finish it off and win even though he's finishing in the top 5, top 10, top 15 mm-hmm. and still getting a, a a a part of that purse. Uh and then even the same thing with Rory and we'll see other guys kind of be brought up into that. I think Brooks Kepko was kind of in that that uh that that for a little while where you know man they they just can't win the big ones they can't come through and win it you know what's what's wrong with them and and kind of criticism towards them but they're they're playing an extremely high level of golf Uh, and and that's really hard to for to to remember sometimes it's just how good they are so i i think rory uh, i i've never really been a rory fan 
but to see him win one does feel good for you know to to see him just because I, I like Rory. I, I think he's a very easy guy to like. Uh, I think he's a guy that you can definitely get behind and say like you know just just kind of looking at him and, and the way that he holds himself, his integrity. Uh, the fact that he stands by his morals, I can really appreciate a guy like that. So the fact that he fought this hard, uh, just really exciting news to kind of see him finally come out on top. Definitely. I think he's about 160 pounds, and he had his best drive on Sunday, 428 yards. Yeah, yeah, that's 400. That's crazy. And I'm, yards. I'm trying to think, too. I think the Scottish <laughs> Open was okay. the same one where – uh, Ricky Fowler had something like a 426, 428 yard drive or something like that too, uh, a few years back. Well, it, that ground there, yeah, all that ground there, everything just rolls. Yeah. So it's like playing on concrete there. Yeah. So, you know, the only bad thing for Rory here is that, you know, my father in law was talking the other night. He said, you know, don't want to win this one because what's next week? You Wait, know what which, next week is? No, which one's next week? It's not the Masters. U.S. Open. U.S. Open. Oh, is it the U.S. Open next week? I believe so. Yeah, and you might be right. Nobody. I, I knew it was coming up. Nobody wins back to back. It yeah. just doesn't happen. Yeah. Probably since yeah. Tiger Woods. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a tough time to win it. I, I don't know. I feel like U.S. Open. I feel like that's that's whenever you start to look at guys like Brooks Kepka and you know the, these guys that win these win these majors. You know, and they they really step up. Uh, I'm trying to think of a couple other names that I could think of. Maybe Scotty Scheffler or even uh, Morikawa. You know, it, you, you think of kind of those names as being those guys that really step up in those big moments in those big matches like that. So uh, it'll be be a lot of fun. And like I said, I, I think it's just it's just fun to see these these fun stories in golf. And I think it's a really good time for golf mm -hmm. just to be able to see some of these these very exciting stories and these kind of comeback stories like Brooks Kepka and Ricky Fowler and and, uh, and now Rory finally winning one. So a I've lot got of a fun projection there. that's going to lead us into our next topic. Here's a projection that's going to lead us into the next topic. Steph Curry will finally retire from basketball and get his PGA card and try to try and compete. You think so? You think he's like that Michael good that he Jordan, can he can do it? Uh, when Michael Jordan retires and tries baseball, he's gonna try that. And I think he may do better that better than Jordan did at baseball. Yeah. Yeah, you think you think uh Steph could compete in the PGA? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean if he put in put in the time that he puts in, in basketball, if he put in that time and effort like all these other PGA guys do, oh absolutely. Yeah, I mean yeah, it, Steph Curry we, we we saw it with the match. We saw it with how good. I mean, he was basically carrying Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey oh, helped out with some some monster drives. You know, being able to put that power behind the ball. But but uh, or I guess not Travis Kelsey. I'm sorry, but Clay Thompson. Uh, yeah, I was thinking yeah, of Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes did really good uh, in that match. But then he was carrying Clay Thompson. I feel like Clay Thompson didn't do much for Steph at all in the match. No. Um, but then nothing. he he definitely showed up. He he showed how good he was there. And then now this past weekend, like you said, with with Steph Curry getting a hole in one in the the match was very exciting. But then he pulls out the win in the uh, it was the annual uh, American American Century Championship. So it's the Celebrity Championship, if I if I remember right, mm -hmm. uh, Celebrity uh, Golf Tournament. Uh, and so the way that he wins it, and this is out in Lake Tahoe, the way he wins it was with an eagle putt. Being able to come and it wasn't an easy putt either. It had had a little curve to it. Just being able to see that and put that putt in with that much, you know, kind of pressure being built up on it. Uh, just a really phenomenal round for for Steph Curry. It's really fun to see different celebrities get out there. Some guys that aren't really golfers and see them kind of go in and and kind of play the game. But uh, do you do you agree with Britain's hot take? You think Steph Curry could compete at the PGA level? I think he physically could. Like Britton mentioned, he re he mentioned some really good things. If Steph puts the time and patience and everything into it, I also think he could. We all know fan base won't be a problem. Um, that would be the least of his problems. But looking into him after watching some of the highlights that he performed, he's definitely got the mojo for it. He can definitely put power behind the ball and – he can come in clutch as we saw him put an ace in it and put an eagle putt. I'm lucky if I can even get 10 feet from the pin. Um, I definitely think Steph Curry easily could. Do I ever see it happening? No, but I mean, who knows what later down the road could easily do. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, I'm right. Okay, cool. But 
I can. It's it's gonna be fun and interesting if he does. Yeah, it's it's hard saying too because we have to remember that Steph he he even owns a Top Golf. This is how much he loves does the he game really? of golf. Yeah, he he owns yeah. one out there and in, uh, in the Bay that. Area somewhere out there. And so I mean he he does love the game. So I mean it's it's not far fetched to say that he couldn't put in the work because I think Steph is that kind of has that kind of a drive where he would force himself to get out there and practice enough until he could compete. Yeah, and, and again, that's the that's the key to why I say this is, you know, right now, think about how much time during the off season and during the season, basketball's a long season. Yeah, how much a lot time of games. and effort he puts on the basketball court. You get rid of all that time by the time you're ready to retire, and dedicate that to golf, yeah, he could be special. Yeah. He could compete with these guys, no yeah, doubt in at- my mind. At the very least, kind of competing in some of these lower level tournaments and working his way and, and in those tournaments being better and bettering yourself and getting yourself used to and acclimated to some of those those scenarios. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely see him playing professional golf. I don't know. Uh, honestly, I think it'd be fun to see him play in the live just the way that the live is kind of built up kind of a team format. I think that would be really fun to see him over there. But uh, I, I also am just kind of torn on the live because I think the live is more exciting. I just don't like the funding of the live. And so it's really hard for me morally to really hop on board with the live. So one of the big talks right now all over golf, and I think that's part of why live popped up is what was to, to try to develop a bigger fan base around the, the sport of golf. They felt like golf was kind of a dying sport, you know, not as bad as boxing, but you know, right there cousins with boxing. And so they've tried coming up with different ways and I'm telling you if you bring a guy like Steph Curry in, your 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 fan base is gonna grow drastically. Um and, and that's gonna that's gonna help the the game of golf quite a bit. So I could honestly see a scenario in which, you know, PGA or, or whatever reaches out to Steph and says, Hey, you know, this is a, a real opportunity and I, I think it'd be pretty awesome to see. Yeah, yeah, I I, I don't disagree with you at all. No, um, I completely agree. Yeah, I I think it'd be it'd be fun. It'd be really fun to see him get into it. Uh, I don't know, I don't know if Steph could give up the game of of basketball just yet. He's definitely got some years left in the tank. Mm-hmm. But once he reaches that point, maybe. Uh, and and I I don't. Well, and the, the I wouldn't, emotion I wouldn't that he showed out. while the emotion he showed while golfing this weekend too, like he is competitive. Yeah. And yeah. that's just in his nature, right? But man, he loves being on the golf course, and you can just tell it. You know, if he hits a bad shot. You can tell it if it's a great shot and his celebration at the end of winning. I mean, holy cow, that was like winning the, you know, game seven of, you know, <laughs> the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. That, that meant a lot to him. And you could tell, man, this is a guy that might like, you know, playing golf about as much as he likes basketball. I mean, he, he loves golf. Yeah, definitely. And, and like I said, too, with, I mean, you can, you can tell that he loves golf or else he wouldn't have bought a top golf to, to put up out in Bay area right. too. And so, I mean, it's just, it, it does show his love for the game. So I, I like, I like the possibility of, of thinking of, of Steph. So maybe we'll start the petition for, for Steph to, to go play professional golf, you know, start off and maybe, maybe start off in a smaller league, see how you fit in and then just kind of build up from there and maybe do it now because then you can always, you've got enough years left that you could still go back to the NBA and play some basketball if it didn't work out. So maybe right now is the perfect time for you, Steph. Josh, maybe you should hit stuff up at him with some Mahler Bros apparel. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll sponsor him, get him get him started. Uh, you know, get him get him out there on the on the golf course. Could be sponsored by Mahler Bros. Uh, I don't know how likely that'd be because Under Armour probably has more money in their pocket than we do. But yeah, Under Armour's uh, not let's, that great. <laughs> but we could we could definitely get get something working, Steph. Uh, so reach out to us. We'd love to hear it. But that's pretty much all we have for today, guys. We thank you all so much for watching, for listening. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that you know when we are on YouTube, when we upload to YouTube, anything like that. And you can always tune in with us. Uh, We try to put something out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Those schedules may change a little bit as we are starting our Saturday specials. So make sure to to, to, make sure to tune in on Saturday mornings at 8:30 a.m. Central Time, so that's 9:30 Eastern Time. Uh, in the mornings on Saturday, make sure to tune in with us because we want to see you live with us. We're going to have live shows all the way up to and even through college football season, and we're going to have some exciting content to bring you 
when we get to college football season as well. So a lot of fun stuff coming up with college football. Uh, so we're going to have a lot to talk about whenever we get kind of closer to the season. And again, like I said, if you're a college football fan, you definitely want to tune in on Saturday mornings for our Saturday specials, getting yes. us ready for college football. So check us out. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, give us a five-star review. That is a great way to help us out and help us grow. Uh, you can always follow us on social media. Share us with your your friends, your family. Share share this video on social media. Whatever the case may be, we'd love to hear from you guys. So comment down below. And we thank you all so much for all the support that we've gotten so far. And until next time. <laughs>